It's an absolute pleasure to be here in Miami. And let's kick off by giving a big and a huge thank you. I see Yasser, Richard, Princess Rima for such a fantastic start for FII, bringing the President of the United States. What a beginning, what a beginning, what a beginning. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about how the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is your partner of choice to make sure that as the world looks at AI winters, AI walls, we are your diffusion and adoption partner to make sure that we move from the peak of inflated expectations to the plateau of productivity. This was my pitch until 24 hours ago when I met these two gentlemen. One of them is, is in the stage somewhere, Peter. And they said to me, Abdullah, that's quite nice, but really what investors want to hear are answers for three key questions. What is Saudi's position with the US on AI? What's your position with others? And how much money are you going to allocate against it? And this is when I decided to change my whole presentation. And I apologize for team for giving them a, a one-nighter to transition to the following three key questions. And as I try to answer these questions, let's appreciate the context. So if we look at Vision 2030, as His Royal Highness have coined it as the most successful success story in the 21st century, this, the investment thesis was very simple. How can we leverage talent and technology in partnership with you to grow the kingdom, grow the region, and grow the world? And as a matter of fact, if you look at these numbers, we've grown since the launch of the vision to $132 billion digital economy, one of the fastest top 10 digital economies across the world. And guess what? The region grew to 260 billion, where the kingdom represented 50% market share. And look at these logos. We just had Safra on stage, was one of the early bettors on the kingdom, investing $1.7 billion that is paying dividends. And as a result of that, we became one of the largest and fastest growing tech forces across the world. 381,000 growing from 150,000. To put things in context, because His Royal Highness said, that Saudi and the Middle East is going to be the new Europe. If you put this number in Europe, we will be the fifth largest tech hub in Europe. And it's at par with the Silicon Valley. And it's no wonder, as part of this socioeconomic impact, we as a proxy, just look at the data center investments in the digital age as we transition into the intelligent age, $10.6 billion, Oracle 1.5, Google, AWS and Microsoft. So if we look at the theme this year, how we invest with purpose, this is a demonstration in how in partnership with you, the global innovators and thinkers of the United States, we have managed to close down the skills divide, the digital divide and the governance divide. And if we look at what we have done, in skills divide, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia have became the most successful story in women empowerment in STEM, tech, and space, jumping from 7% to 35%. And can I give a big round of applause for all the women that we have here? You make us so proud, not only on planet Earth, but also in space. Rihanna Bernawi became the first Arab woman to go to the ISS in partnership with the US, working on tumor organoids, tackling cancer. We have worked on empowering Africa with building the largest virtual hospital. And on governance divide, this is historic. In the toughest year that humanity have seen, 2020, under the leadership of His Royal Highness, this is two years before generative AI started, His Royal Highness said the world must agree on consensus on the trustworthy AI OECD principles, where right now every single AI platform references this historic moment. And it's no wonder 
that with these accomplishments, we are well positioned to partner with you to close down the three new divides of the intelligent age. A compute divide, a data divide, and an algorithmic divide. On the compute divide, it's projected that the world is going to need the pessimist 63 gigawatts. The optimist, 100 plus gigawatts. That's as much energy as India would need in the next five years, the most populous nation in the world. And in terms of data, we're right now moving into synthetic data because we ran out of data sources. And on all algorithmic divides, we can't afford for folks that don't share the shared values and vision that we share to start embracing and invoking biases and hallucination into these divides and into these algorithms. So what's happening right now, we are committing our energy resources, as they represent 40% of the total cost of ownership of all training and inference nodes, to work with the who's who from Team USA. We placed a $1.5 billion investment with Grok. And if you're not familiar with them, they focus on language processing units. Effectively, how you put memory on the chip to do inference in a very quick way. Because let's remember, every time you call on these GPUs, LPUs, and NPUs, you consume joules. And when you multiply them with time, you get watts. And we're partnering with Sambanova and with NVIDIA and AMD and others on how we can make sure that the kingdom provides the most cost affordable and sustainable tokens to fuel the intelligent age. And on the data divide, we're leveraging years and centuries of wealth of heritage as the heart of the Arab and the Muslim world to make sure as the world today talks about governance, they appreciate that it came back to the golden age of Islam, of the heart of the, of the Arab and the Muslim world. And on the algorithmic divide, Aramco, they're leveraging 90 years worth of industrial data. The first mainframe we received in 1947. And right now we have 15 trillion tokens feeding the MetaBrain, the first industrial LLM with actual impact and purpose, helping Aramco achieve a billion dollar savings from their bottom line. And Victara by Amr Awadallah, a Saudi entrepreneur building engines that are immune to biases and hallucination. And as the world today in the intelligent age leverages this training and inference nodes, we became the largest use case in terms of generative AI, agentic AI, and autonomous AI. On generative AI, Dr. Ali Al Hassan and Ihsan Haq, who received the US Presidential Award for his work in AI, are leveraging Generative AI for drug formulation to tackle sickle cell disease, a disease that impacts 20 million folks around the world with gene editing technologies. On agentic AI, we have Ghaid al Tasan, who has partnered with Aramco, building the fully automated agentic AI to help Aramco manage their pipeline operation. And this one is very close to all of our hearts. We have physical AI, autonomous AI, by Dr. Firas Khalil, delivering the first fully robotics heart transplant, making sure that we close down the divide when it comes to heart surgeons. Second question, what's our position with others? You tell me, 90% of our digital and AI investments is with Team USA, all of your major hyperscalers and tech companies have chosen. Hey, Peter, thank you. I, I showed you a pretty picture earlier. And all of them are choosing the kingdom of Saudi Arabia to bet on the kingdom. And it's no wonder that just in the past two years alone, as a proxy for our investment, in the next couple of years, we've racked up $13 billion in partnership with you because we invest with purpose. And once we partner, we partner for a lifetime to close down the compute, data, and algorithmic divide. And before I close, because my team spent so much time, Peter, on pulling up the Gartner hype cycle, put it back again, 
if you're looking for a key partner to help humanity move from the peak of inflated expectations, weather through the storms of AI winters and the disillusionment to the slope of enlightenment to the plateau of productivity, the kingdom stands tall as your partner of choice for both AI acceleration and adoption. Thank you so much. <laughs>